Hola, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a metaphysical Bible study with myself, SED13, Solution, and Miss Smokey. But Miss Smokey's not here today. We're sending her love. She's a busy lady. Sending her love. Uh, how are you, Solution? I'm all good. I'm all good. Today's December the 5th, 2021. The end. We're, we're already at the end of this. The last month of 2020? Yep. Yeah. No, 2021. 2021. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is, it, it's the, it was the second chapter of 2020 for what's been happening in the world. Mm -hmm. But now things are just moving along even faster. So today we're going to open up a, meta, a page from a metaphysical interpretation of the Bible in with the intention that it's going to help us through the next coming moments, hours, days. Um, usually what we do is we just open up a page and we see what message is in there because it's always a message. And Smokey pulls a card, but she's not here. So we're gonna we're just gonna wing it. We're gonna we're gonna open up a page and we're gonna see what happens. And um I may pull a chakra card, but I don't I don't think that I have to pull one to know what is needed right now in the world and that's grounding. And we can talk about that as we um as we as you know, before we wrap it up. We'll so. um say a quick Prayer. Okay. We come to you most high for and we thank you for giving us the energy throughout our body and the oxygen through our lungs to exist, to be here in this moment in time. May we approach this session with a clear mind and a open heart to the message and the information that you provide us in this session. In your name, we rejoice. In your name, we give thanks. Ache, ache, ache. Ache. Gracias for that. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. All right, so... Did I do, do you remember who left off at the center? I think it's no, probably have, your turn, isn't it? I have no idea. I think it's your turn. We take turns to um, to read, but mm -hmm. do you want to do it? You want me to do it? You're already doing it. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to put it in the cage, and here we go. Page 705. To refresh our memory, we will begin with Isaiah 1, verse 21 through 23. How the faithful city has become a harlot. She who was full of justice, righteousness, truth, or truthfulness once logged in her, but now murderers. 22. Your silver has become dross. Your drink diluted with water. 23. Your rulers are rebels and companions of thieves. Everyone loves a bribe and chases after reward. They do not defend the orphan, nor does the widow's plea from before them. We discuss this particular segment in the chapter pertaining to the great prophet. His uninhibited, trenchant style exposes the earthly follies of humankind. And when we think objectively, we find that there is not much difference between today and Isaiah's time. We do not seem to offer much in the way of honor, respect, or reverence towards others, life, or nature. We take what we want, and we seldom ask what we do, what we do is permissible, I'm sorry, 
We take what we want and we seldom ask if what we do is permissible under the laws of men or the laws of the universe. Material rewards appear to be the primary goal. We had a choice then, and we have one now, as to how we establish the foundation of our lives. Somehow, we have allowed the carnal or lower selves to overwhelm the divine beings that we can be, as in the times of Adam and Eve, when Cain slew Abel. To add to our thesis on the above verses, let us revisit the word city. We mentioned in the chapter on Isaiah that, in, that it represented the heart center of our emotional body. When considering how our energy centers operate, we cannot reach the crown until all chakras are united by our positive energy streams. Thus, the city becomes a vital point on our journey upward. Furthermore, Revelation 1 verse 6 made us kings, implying the existence of a kingdom. And we are that kingdom within, which there are, which there are is a city and a temple. This inner city had once pledged fidelity to the creator's original intention. Faithfulness can be found in the higher divine minds, but unfortunately, most were corrupted by the way we think of ourselves and the way we surrendered to the temptations of external life, proving again that we live our lives backward. The term harlot seems to fit the situation when we allowed our minds to fool us into pursuing our type of lifestyle and misusing the power granted us by the creator. Actually, that was pretty deep. This was about exactly what is happening now in the world. It's talking about the, um, I mean, as soon as I started going, um, we'll talk about the faithful, how the faithful city has become a a harlot. And that's exactly where, where we are. And it's talking about, you know, whenever we go into this book, we know that this is about the self. We know this is about, um, you know, the chakras inside of our body. Oh, Smokadocious is here. Hey, Smokadocious. What's up, girl? What's up? Look, I'm live doing the, doing the, um, the Bible study. So call in the number. I started right now. Are you by yourself? Me and Solution. Oh, hi, Solution. Hi. <laughs> well, go ahead. Go do it. Do it. No, I'm, 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 I'm still on. I'm looking at Netflix. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm a, I'll call you afterwards, okay? Okay, okay, okay. All right. Love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. She sounds a lot better. She faithful sounds city great. Into a harlot. Uh-huh. Um, faithful we city has become that. into a harlot, and that's what what has happened in our in our in our world now. Mm-hmm. You know, and people are selling out over is it ultimately it's money. A harlot is a hooker. It, well, it, it, it's a hooker, but the way I that they know. define it here, a heart yeah, definitely the way that they define it here, external life. Okay. The term harlot seems to fit the situation when we allowed our minds to fool us into pursuing our type of lifestyle and misusing the power granted us by the creator. So, yeah, it's basically saying that you're we're hoeing ourselves. We are selling our souls and we are selling ourselves for the materialistic things, the money, yeah, you know. Mean. Yeah. And so what happens is that everybody has an opportunity to transform that. And this is this time that they're describing here in the Bible. This is something that just continues. It continues. This is life and it's what it is. And now we're we're experiencing this great awakening where these words are making sense to a lot more people in regards to what it means to be part of this world and to be the master of your own ship. You know, because the, no one else, nobody else outside can help you get there. You have to do this within yourself. And this Bible really just breaks down the metaphysical aspects of what they talk about in the Bible. And it puts it in a place where um, we have more accessibility. We recognize that this is about us and it's talking about us, the human. Um, I think it also said that respectability... 
has not it is not a you know respect for others is not one that is something that is consistently seen in today's time yes i think it says that yeah and when when i read that you mm-hmm. know it reminded me of you know, whenever, whenever you pick a flower or you, you know, you have to ask for permission to do that and you get a feeling of whether you should or whether you shouldn't, but it's something that shows that you are respecting, you know, the, this part of yourself, which is nature that's within us. And then of course that goes to people and we want to do that with other people as well, but people are not able to do that. And it's not because, they weren't taught or because they have bad manners. It is because they don't know about loving themselves. They don't know about um, the research that needs to be done when it has to do with our own being and our own person and what we are made of, what we, what we come from. But that's something that, that's not something that anybody could tell you. It's something that you have to discover. I've been hearing a lot of people um, talking about how you have to wake other people up. Mm-hmm. Or you have to show people what the truth is, but your truth is subjective. Right. Your truth is is your experience and what you deem as truth, mm-hmm. what you define as truth. You know, so it's like you can't tell somebody else what to believe or what to do or what to think. We have an example in the world of what that has done. So now we're being called to do this work on ourselves so that we could recognize the power of ourselves and recognize that we have to go within and do this self-healing so that then we can uh, affect the world because that's what happens. What's happening inside of us is being shown to us in our reality, in our physical reality. Um, When considering how our energy centers operate, We cannot reach the crown until all chakras are united by our positive energy streams. Thus, the city becomes a vital point on our energy, on our journey upward. This is very important because there's so many in the world that are panicking now about what's happening outside and, you know, what's going on in the world, which is just causing them to become more fearful and more sick and more um, disengaged from their own mind. They're being led um, emotionally to be in this parasitic environment that's just full of Fear, fear and more fear is what it is. And in order for a person to work on not having those experiences and not having those kind of anxieties, the solution is is in the earth. The solution is in you. The solution begins with you stopping and detaching from everything outside of yourself and focusing on your inner being, you know? And it, it, and people think that it's, um, you know, it, it really truly is not... It's about a religion that has to do with yourself, you being your own religion. It's not about, you know, it's not even, yeah, it's not about looking outside of yourself at all. And there's been so much proof of what this is and what goes on and what we have to do to overcome that now the veil has been lifted. All the information is out there. Now we must practice it. Now we have to do it. And see, the faith, we talked about faith, I think last time Mm -hmm. um, that we did, Bible study, but that faith is what begins it all. If you follow uh, faith and you trust your faith, you're going to keep moving forward no matter what it looks like on the outside. You have to be single in purpose and you have to be focused on yourself and your own healing and on aligning your energetic body system so that you can get all of the information that you need so that you can continue to move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Creator's original. Was there anything else, Puppy, that stood out to um, you? Those were the main three things that I took the, about the, you know, the first statement about the harlot, and then the second statement about respectability, and then the third statement. Yes, I also um, recognized or stood out with the chakras needing to be. You can't skip. Mm-hmm. Or you can't, you know, every chakra needs to be um, activated before you can reach the top level. And some people, the they want to go, they're trying to go to through the crown first. Mm-hmm. And they want to just be on that level of higher thinking and, and, and be in their higher mind. But right. you cannot get to your higher mind if you don't start on the ground level. 
You know, you have to ground yourself. You have to be rooted in what it is that you know and who you know yourself to be. And that's what helps you expand upward. Mm -hmm. And so there's no avoiding that. And the world is showing us now just by the things that are happening. The word, the world is overcome by fear, you know, and it, and it's showing us what happens when we're fearful. But it also shows us what happens when we have faith. And these things happen very quickly. Because it's the basic rules of building. Mm hmm Yeah. That's the truth right you there. You build from the, from the floor up, and you have to have a strong foundation to to build upward, to, you know, to, to be sustained. Makes sense. There are people that feel that they are... You know, because I mean, the, the the world is very cruel, and there's people that are being forced to do things that they would not do, or they're not th that they're ignorant of because they're in fear of losing their livelihood, losing their home, losing this, losing that, losing. So this today is another confirmation on the fact that you must release what is not serving you, and you have to go towards what is good for you and sometimes it may feel like oh well if i go to what's, what i think is good for me but then i won't be able to pay my rent or i won't be able to do this that's fear that's overcoming and taking in mm -hmm. and so when we talk about being single in purpose you can't do both you can't fear and create and be happy you those those two things cannot exist in the same frequency, two completely different frequencies. So you have to choose one. Like and serving two masters. Absolutely. And if you really trust in your high source, the, what you came from, you must trust it in full faith. Mm -hmm. And when you do that in full faith, you get rewarded. You're going to see the outcome of that. You're going to see the benefits of that trust and that faith. And then it gives you empowerment because then you recognize you're, you're constantly being confirmed of this great power that exists in you that you, we have access to. And know that the things that, there are a lot of things that are working against humanity right now, but nothing is greater than the source that we come from. But that has to be a truth that you come to, you know, you can't, you know, people have been telling us for a long time to, you know, believe in Jesus and God and believe this, but don't believe that. Believe this, but wait, but, you know, don't ask about this. Don't, you know, all of these things have existed in the world before. That's no more. And so now everybody has to figure it out on their own. And once people figure it out, it changes their lives completely. So I said I was going to pull, that I might pull a card, but I'm not going to pull a card because this verse confirmed that I said prior that we were going to talk about grounding. Mm -hmm. And this verse confirmed that that's exactly what we need to be focused on. Mm -hmm. So I do want to give a tip to people that are feeling overwhelmed, that you're feeling um, like whenever you start to feel like the energy from the outside has taken over, first I will say... Turn off the television, turn off the computer, um, but go away from that. And then I will say, take off your shoes and plant your naked feet on the ground. Any piece of ground that you could find is going to work instantaneously. It shoots, the energy shoots up from the ground into your body. And it is a very powerful healing that happens. It moves faster than the speed of light when you do that. We just saw the video about that, how fast that energy soups up um, into your body from the earth. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. why, you know, they're not even able to, uh, what is it, um, like put a number on it or test it, calculate it, because it's so, it happens so fast and it's so much energy. So, and that's the solution for anyone's healing. Because you have to go to Mother Earth. You have to go to the source that you come from. The, the, the sources and the governments and the people and those powers that were, um, they're not good for people. They're just not at all. So any move that you make away from that is going to be a benefit for you. So I hope that today's session uh, made some sense. Your grounding, I'm going to give you another, uh, a couple of stones that you could use for grounding. Definitely black tourmaline. You can also use hematite. You can also use um, tiger's eye. 
Uh, you can also use, um, oh, obsidian, mahogany obsidian, definitely. Um, and you can also use your crystal quartz if, if that's all you have. Any any of the stones that you have that you can get your hands on, anything that you put in the palms of your hand, you're holding it in your energy centers, it's going to be beneficial. So, you know, we don't have to overcomplicate things and put ourselves in a position of, oh, well, I don't have this or I don't have that. Um, truly, all you need is yourself and everything else is going to come. Uh, so work on that. Your meditation is absolutely of utmost importance. You have to meditate. Even if it's just for a minute a day, do it until it becomes a habit. You will do it for longer. It, it will happen. It will come. Because when you are doing the process of meditation, when you're doing it correctly, I don't like to even say correctly because it, it really is just, there's so many different ways of getting there. But once you get there, you do want to stay there and your body starts to crave it and you recognize when you have to go into a meditation. And, you know, right now the world is competing for your energy. It's happening everywhere. Anything that you look at is taking your energy, it's consuming your time. So when you're, when you meditate and you do the work on yourself, you fall less, you know, those, those things on the outside don't become an issue. You don't feel tempted, you know, to spend hours wasting your life away on the internet. You know what I'm saying? It's like you start to recognize the importance of your well-being and how that well-being is being attained through your action, through your, you know, basic actions, taking a walk, you know, smelling a flower, hugging a tree, looking at the sun, the moon, you know, it, the world offers a plethora of healing tools and it's up to us to find them, but we have to do the work within ourselves if we want to start, you know, receiving those guiding messages that say, go here or do this or take this or do that. Um, so we're not going to keep you guys too long today. Is there anything else that you wanted to point out that you wanted to share solution? No. Not that I... <laughs> Is that a coyote? I don't know. I don't think we, that they... We just heard know. a howl. Yeah, I don't know if they're out this early. Because I know at night, they, yeah. be, they be singing at night. Yeah. Um, welcome to those of you that, are, that have just come into the study group um, and are joining us. For the first time, there is a whole bunch of um, Bible studies that you can go back and, and take a look at and refresh. They all make sense all the time, no matter when you listen to them. They really do. Uh, you're, it's, a, it's great to have you. We're happy to have you guys all here. We're looking forward for a whole new season of healing in 2022. So with that, I'm going to let Solution... Pray us on out, and that'll be that. Solution. All right. We thank you most high for giving us this, this session of enlightenment and information. May we look to put this information into use, and may we move in gratitude and humility and abundance and bliss. Ache, ache, ache. Ache.